Okay, this is getting exciting. Now we get to touch Python for the first time. Pull up your terminal, type in Python, hit enter. This will pull up a Python interpreter that's interactive, meaning you can type one line, it'll interpret that line and do whatever it is you told it to do. Looking at this one, we can see if we type Python, the interpreter that it pulls up is Python version 2.7. A quirky thing about Python is that it underwent some major changes between version 2 and version 3. Version 2 is old news. It's being retired. There are still a lot of systems that use it, but they're in the process of being upgraded. Version 3 is what you want to do all of your work on. So to get to version 3, type Python 3 with no space. This will pull up another interpreter here on this machine, it's Python 3.5. And we can test it with a very short Python line. Print, parentheses, quote, hi, quote, parentheses. Print is a special command to Python. Parentheses say, print whatever's within these parentheses. And the quote, hi, quote, says literally, print the characters hi. And we can hit enter, and then the Python interprets this, and it does exactly what we tell it to, and it prints hi. That's a little bit of Python programming right there. It is possible to write all of our Python code in a line-by-line -line interpreter like this, but incredibly ineffective. We won't spend any time here, but it is a nice way to just test that things are working. To get out of this, type quit, open parentheses, close parentheses, and that tells Python that you're done, and it returns you back to your command line prompt. Mac OS comes with a Python build pre-installed, and almost any currently active Mac will have Python 3 on top, not just Python 2. So this is all that you should need to do. If by chance, you don't have Python on your Mac. If typing Python 3 brings up an error, then you may need to go and download it. To do that, go to www.python.org downloads. There's a link below if you wanna follow that. Here, you can get all of the versions of Python that you need. The very latest as of this recording is Python 3.9. I actually recommend going one version back from that. For myself, I have found that occasionally there are tools that don't work with the very latest version of Python, but that is a matter of personal preference. But here, I'll show you how to get Python 3.8 in case you don't want to get the very latest. If you scroll a little bit further down the page, you can see looking for a specific release, and it shows Python releases by version number. On the download page for 3.8.6, we can look at the list of all of the files available. Under the operating system column, we can see that there is one available for Mac OS X. That's perfect. So as long as we have OS X 10.9 or later, which almost all of us will at this point, we can download this particular installer, this particular version of Python. You can use the same method to go back to older versions if you need to. And also you can use this to get the very, very latest. So we click on the installer, we download it, click through the menu options that let you install it. It'll ask you for your password. That's entirely normal. It takes a minute or two to download it and install it. And then when you're all done, it lets you know. You can close all of the windows associated with that. And now we can go back and test it. We can go to our command line and type Python 3, but when we do so, we still get our version 3.5. To really turn things over and to make sure that our terminal can find the newest version, we need to close our terminal window and open a fresh one. Now when we type Python 3, we get our latest Python version 3.8.6. We can run our little test, print, Hi, it runs beautifully, and we are totally up to date at this point. If you've been through all of the videos so far, 
We've looked at files and directories. We've looked at how to navigate them from the command line. We've looked at text editing, creating, editing, and saving text files. And now we've made sure that we have Python on our machine. We have all of the pieces in place. Next, we're going to write some Python.